All right, welcome everybody to uh, African Ancestral Wall and Malevna's Ocean View Restaurant. We are um, happy to see Brother Bomani again, a very regular friend of ours, of the family and of the group. Uh, I think you'll, um, hopefully there's a couple of other people who will come over here uh, from the diaspora out here in the Prom Prom New Ningo area. We have a kind of a growing community of people, you know, coming from different places. Uh, they've been running around a lot this weekend, so I don't know who's going to be free today or not. I have a friend right here from Detroit, because uh, someone here was telling me they were from Detroit. So um, hopefully, yeah, he, he comes back through here. And uh, yeah, just different people from different places. Anyway, um, let me see. What I usually kind of start off with is, uh, you know, just finding out who is from where. So I know uh, who we're dealing with. I ask a few of you when you're getting off the, the plane, not the plane, off the bus. So uh, by way of introduction, I'm Jerry Johnson, if I didn't say it the first time. I'm Los Angeles. I've been here um, 18 years now, actually, which is quite a while. It goes fast, uh, but it's the best place for me. Good thing for us. I think we're going to find that uh, as time goes on, not too much time, we're going to wish we had all tried to at least make some level of provision somewhere because um, we, I was there in October. People seem to be very content. No, well, no, I take that back. Not very content. People are not, I'm talking about black people now. It's not that we're so content. It's more that we uh, have not let our minds envision other options, especially African options. And so what happens is... Uh, if you can't envision an African option because you, what do you think of Africa, then you find yourself in a situation where you're much more tolerant of what should be intolerable. And I think the, um, the climate has changed fast. And it's been three years, almost three years since I've been there, and I can feel the additional tension. Uh, I can feel the uh, but it seems to me the options of black people constricting and not expanding, uh, not that there's not some people who are blowing up and doing well, but just the general group. If you care about the group, then you'll see that, you know, it's, it's, we're experiencing some problems. And I'm not exactly sure where it's going, but I don't think it's going to end well. So. Let me just start with the brother here. He's got Newark on the cap, which so makes me think he's from Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> Mississippi. You said, you said the word right, Newark, so you should know it's from New Jersey. Okay. All right. All right. Then. Well, Is that the only Newark in the world? No. You got Newark. Well, all Newarks pronounce Newark different. Newark, Newark, New Jersey, you could tell people from Newark, New Jersey, because they say Newark, New Jersey. Delaware say Newark. Ohio Newark. say Newark. Newark. <laughs> Most people say Newark. <laughs> So, so but, from LA, yeah. we call it over there. Yeah. <laughs> We're the rest of the place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, go ahead, brother. From uh, Newark. 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 Newark, New Jersey. Well, well, he's from Newark. Newark. That's probably a place in Europe. Is there a place in Europe called Newark? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. All right, go ahead and tell us uh, your uh, name and a little bit about My yourself. name is Anthony Gurley. My name is Anthony Gurley. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, I'm a railroad constructor. Uh, it's not my first time in Africa, but it's my first time in Ghana. Okay. So um, I'm enjoying it so far. Are and, uh, you uh, uh, Are you making some plans? Making some plans. Uh, I'm almost there. Making some plans. Almost. Making, almost there. Too. Uh, you're well, almost starting to make plans. Are you making plans? You're I'm almost done with the plans. It's 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 making plans. You yeah. know, cause um you have to work. So yeah, yeah you know, you it's, it's getting that time that yeah, right. I got to do something. Okay. You know, so. Are you seeing some? Some reasons that you feel like moving uh, oh, that are okay. changing. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I got. I got things I got, changing. I got, yeah, things changing. All and right. this, 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 just right here, just opening up my mind even more. That's beautiful. You know. So instead of moving to the south, why well, move to the south? south? When I, when I can move over here. Like, like Malcolm <laughs> said. Like Malcolm said. I don't know if you ever saw that one, one presentation, and they was drumming and they were doing all of that, and Malcolm came to the mic and he said. 
That music really makes me feel back home. He said, he said, I want to remind you, I said back home, not down home. <laughs> yeah. He said, all I think of when I think of down home is a rope. Yeah. <laughs> As Malcolm, back to Africa. Mm -hmm. All right, sister. Oh, hello, everyone, again. Again? And, uh, yes, indeed, Jacqueline Walker from Jackson, Mississippi, by way of Flint, Michigan. So the water is bad everywhere. So uh, I'm just enjoying being here, my first time in Africa, first time in Ghana, and I'm just loving it. And um, I would not move here unless my daughter wants to. And I mean, I have money for investments, but it's all hers. It's all hers. I'm retired and I just do nothing at home but what I wanna do. Go where I wanna go, eat what I wanna eat. So I'm just, I'm here because of her. And she knew of the program through Bamani, so that's why I'm here. So whatever she wants to do, I'm game. She's not here. She's back at the hotel room. This is her third time in Africa. Yeah, she came with the NAACP as a child. Went to Haiti. I mean, she's been all over. But uh, they are back in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Deborah. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, second time on the continent, first time in Ghana. Uh, back home, I do commercial uh, real estate financing. And uh, very happy to be here. And yes, making plans. Wide open. Thank you. All right. Hey, how you doing? I'm Dwayne from Atlanta. First time on the continent, first time in Ghana. Uh, from Atlanta. I'm a uh, production chef, and I'm making plans. It looks good here. Yeah, Savannah. Yeah, Savannah. I was born, and then yeah, and then moved up to Atlanta. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm Sandra Robinson, aka Dele Ayo Imamu. I named my gave myself my African name at 15 um, because I've been African as long as I've known myself, and I've I've learned from the best, Dr. Ben, uh, Professor Small. Uh, he was Brother Small back then. Um, and this is the cultivation, this is the culmination of the life's journey. And to be here, it's, it's real. It is real. And everything that I thought I would feel coming here, I felt that and more. I cried like all day. December 20th. Yeah, I'm born and raised in Harlem. Born and raised in Harlem. And so. Yeah, the village of Harlem, that's right. And um, so this is like coming full circle, and it's it's overdue. I wish I had done this 10, 15 years ago. Better late than That's than right, lie. that's right, yeah. And, uh, I would say, boy, if I had it on, I wrong hand gesture. <laughs> right. uh, okay, now, are you doing this in a systematic way? Yes. Oh, nice to meet you. My name is David from Brooklyn, New York, uh, but I currently live in Harlem. Um, back home, I work for the Department of Education, 21 years as a school administrator. Um, this is my first time in Africa, my first time in Ghana, and it's a pleasure to be here. Hello again. My name is Jeremy Hampton from Louisville, Kentucky. First time on the continent. I'm a postal worker at home. My family sent me out to be the, the guinea pig. Everybody was scared to come, so I came out for my family, represent for my family. Bring them some good news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, my name is Queen Amina. Uh, my legal name is Angela McCommons. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, and this is my third time on the continent. 
and I really enjoy Ghana. Ghana is my favorite place so far, so I'm happy to be here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. All right, uh, greetings, family. Uh, I'm your brother, Jonathan Kofi, for my day name, Ghanaian day name. Uh, happy to be here. It's always a blessing and it's peaceful when we're here in Ghana. Uh, yes, I want to make this home, but from everything that I've seen and studied and looked at over the past four years, it takes not only time and patience, but uh, sound wise uh, business and financial moves to make to ensure that when you come here that you're prepared for anything that could go awry or you know, making sure that you're having the income coming in on a consistent, steady basis to maintain a certain lifestyle or enhance that lifestyle and do also do ventures here. And so that's definitely what I'm looking to. That's just on a family level, but more so on a community level, I'm building in Jahasi with Bamani. And, you know, that's kind of why I, I like the idea of community. So, Did you yep. say where you were from? I'm uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. I could say it's sort of the home, my hometown, but I've lived everywhere. Uh, I was a military brat. Um, so I moved all, all around the United States. And then myself, I was in the U.S. military. Um, so I've kind of gotten like, I've traveled a lot, just even outside of the military. And uh, I want to make this home. So I see this is the, the answer. Is we know it's nation building. You have to start with a community and started a family. Um, I married my wife, Ida, and she's from here in Ghana, from a place called Sunyani. All right. Okay. And uh, the sisters back here, they're from Ghana, but we still want to say hello to them. Okay, okay this is Ida on the left, right? From Sunyani, which uh, I've never been to Sunyani, but they tell me it's the nicest place in Ghana. Yeah. And sister? Yeah. Say your name. Okay, my, my name is Duncan. Uh, I work with the group, you know. We we were trying to, you know, help Bumani is doing a great job, you know, he's trying to unite, you know, black folks, you know. But the issue is uh, we need to try and come together and support each other. And uh, the most important thing is the trust. You know, we need to try and you know trust each other. You know, then we we'll do the good work. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, hi, my name is JJ. I'm from Ghana, and I'm also part of the group, and we are connecting together. Thank you. So, um, you know, there's all kind of things to talk about um, if, we, if we like. I think maybe we can uh, do the wall and then when we get through, we can come back and talk a little more. Well, Monty had told me, that I guess you almost had breakfast time. Yeah. Because he, he mentioned one o'clock for eating, so I said, ah, okay. So, uh, so we got time. So that way we can take a little time. But if y'all need anything to drink or anything, we can we can still hook something up. Is there any any questions or you all just want to take the tour? Or let me let me tell you a little bit about the tour and a little about the wall and all of that if you like me to before we go down. Is that alright? Yeah. Alright, so uh, about the African ancestor wall. Okay, I came to Ghana as a Garveyite, you know, uh, like a lot of other people who yeah think we need to build something on the African continent so we have some power, respect, mm -hmm. dignity, and even sovereignty mm -hmm. uh, around the world wherever we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I first um, was, I, I built this house in 2004 and uh, Brother Bomani came out to visit me I think maybe 2005 and remember as far as you could see in every direction it was all bush. 
Really? In fact, even from going to there to, to the end of my wall down here, you almost needed a, you know, a, a machete to get through. So things are, uh, as you can see, really growing. But anyway, when I first came, uh, I was spending a lot of time at Lagon, the university, uh, trying to talk to a lot of the students about, you know, Pan-Africanism, African history, African civilizations, you know, a lot of the things that we studied with Asa and the rest coming up. But I realized that most of the college students, although they would listen politely, you know, what's on their mind is like getting out of Ghana or getting the connection or getting the hookup or the money, whatever. And they already are outward oriented, which is a problem because these are some of our best and brightest, you know, in Lagon and some of the other places. Um, so then I changed my strategy after a few years and um, started spending more time out here, started going to a lot of the, sm the schools where the smaller children are, with the idea being if they're younger, they haven't, you know, completely drank the Kool-Aid, you know, <laughs> taken the pill or whatever it is they're supposed to do. Um, so that was working out better in terms of just, you know, getting to some of the young people whose minds are still fertile and open. The problem is, is you know, there's a million villages out here and all of them can get your car stuck, you know, if it's raining or whatever. You know, it's just, logistically, it's really tough. So, um, I got the idea in 2017, which was after some years, that rather than go into these school, village schools so much, I'll still go from time to time. Uh, I will put the ancestral wall here and then appeal to the principals and the teachers and the community, parents, whatever start bringing the students here on field trips. And that way, when they came, I had their undivided attention. That's one thing, because when you go into these schools, I mean, there's a hundred things going on at the same time in these village schools. It's noisy. It's, you can't see well pictures. In here. So when they come here, you know, I have their attention. And um, the teachers are a little bit more invested because, you know, they had to organize it and get the transportation and bring them here. So they want the children to pay attention. But it's not a problem because the children have never seen anything like it. They've never seen uh, black people who've done things in big pictures, formed. And so what it tells them is that the people must be important and he must, he or she must be important for someone to take the time to make these big portraits. So right away, even in the beginning, you've already kind of won because they assign some level of importance to, and then coming from the U.S. is a part of it too, because they say, okay, if this person came all the way from America, which we all know is heaven, and spent his time and decided his priority was to do something like this, then this must be important and these people must be important. So they pay better attention, I think, and, and, and I think that works well. So uh, we've taken countless people through here, especially the students. COVID slowed us up as it did everyone else. So 2020, we had almost no, no schools come through. 2021, it's picked up a little bit, but you know, it's kind of a roller coaster, as you know. Um, so anyway, that's the reason I did the wall, just to make it accessible to the children as young as possible. And you may see some pictures around where I have two-year-olds that are walking through and they're staring at the, <laughs> staring up there but whatever it is they're seeing you know I think it's, it's it's registering somewhere in there because the idea is to put something in there as we say plant the seed whatever you want to call it to where if if nowhere else in there next several years they see or hear anything like this it's at least it's in there then later on when folks like us or other people are beginning to give them access or show them something else or some documentary pops up somewhere or some movie on Amina comes on Netflix, whatever the case has to be. Um, then they're like, wait a minute, I, you know, there, there's something there. So we're hoping to be able to reawaken some kind of um, deep feeling and affinity and love for the race, for themselves as members of the race, just by hopefully putting a seed or two in there. It doesn't always work, but uh, if you ask yourself, just everyone in here, um, how you got interested in, in Africa or African people or African consciousness or African progress or power, 
there's somebody somewhere back there that had some small influence. And even, even as, you know, old drunk Uncle Willie, he used to, you know, get get drunk on New Year's and go, them, them pyramids were built by black folk. <laughs> and then pass out, you know. But still you're thinking, you know, you know. He, you know, he might he might know something, you know. And, you know, it, it hits you. And nobody's been able to prove him wrong other than movies, you know. And then later on they hear something, some shake on, you know, someone saying, well, these Africans are doing this and killing it. They're like, you know, uh, and so, you know, now they're like ready to get back on board and see what's going on. So every little thing you do, especially the youngsters and as young as you can do it, don't ever take it for granted and think you're not really doing anything. Anytime you get a chance, even if they just standing in line at the, at the whatever, you know, say a little something, give them a little something, because you never know where that's going to end up. And that's what we're going to have to do collectively to get out of this mess. I always say we're trying to create the Africans we need to solve the problems we have. And the problems we have are relative powerlessness. Rel you know, when I say it, I don't mean hopelessness or weakness. I just mean you know, just the balance of power right now is not in our favor. And we can do something about it, but you, we have to be intentional about it, you know, and know why we're doing it and where we're going. So this idea is to start building those minds that can come and build a nation that we're going to have to have. Uh, we're going to project power in this world. And we're going to do it. We're doing it already. But uh, we invite everyone to join. So that's why I did the wall. Attach a little speech to it, but that's why I did the wall. Uh, uh, you'll see different styles on the wall because I had like eight different artists and so none of which are me. I mean, I can't draw a circle, but I mean, we have some nice artists. Uh, some of these are being a little bit refurbished now, so you'll see some little incomplete pieces on some of them, but you know, that's okay. And the last thing I say is the way I chose the people on the wall was based on whatever attributes I wanted to uh, present to the children about that. So, so if it's courage, if it's leadership, if it's creativity, inventiveness, uh, determination, uh, integrity, brilliance, all of those type of things, I kind of listed all of that and then I started finding people in our history that map back in there. And even sometimes if I want to make a point about, you know, the, who, whoever we're dealing with, whether or not they can be trusted, I'll even pick a character who exemplifies the fact that that's not the best idea. So that's how we chose who was on the wall. So you see people you know well, people you've never heard of, but I'll explain to you in the context of the youth of why they're on the wall as we go through. So um, what we can do, I think our time is pretty good. We can, we can walk. Oh, uh, the sun is not beating too bad now, so we'll just go as, you know, until we're comfortable and if everybody wants to break or something, we can come back. Uh, just take a quick break and go back down and finish or just till after you eat. I'm not sure what the program is for what time you're trying to get out of here. Is there something else afterwards? No, we're just doing this and then we're going back. Okay, so this is the only thing. So we can break it up any way you like because right now it's only... It's, it's, Probably 11 or 11 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock, 11.03, so we've got time to do it any way you want. So, y'all ready to go hit the wall? Y'all ready to hit the wall? You see I got some...